right now. Mr. City Attorney, welcome. Okay, we're going to wait for the manager to come right down. Okay, thank you. I have my glasses on because I can't even read that. This is like a, Sylvia, this is like a, a vision test. Oh my God. Okay. Manager's on his way down, so we just give him another minute. Okay. Mm. They give you reading glasses with this, or? No, I got mine. Now I can read it. I think Commissioner uh, Grieco is going to be a little bit later, and I think okay, no. Commissioner uh, Wolfson. I don't think is coming. So, so two seconds, and the manager will be here. Okay, Mr. Manager. All right. Uh, this is the City Commission Sunshine Meeting. Good afternoon. Uh, to discuss budgetary policy and or issues. Today is Wednesday, September 16th, 2015. All righty. Um, how shall we? So, do you have something you want to present right away? Okay, please. Okay, Commissioner Whitehorn has requests. So, is your mic not on? No, can, what I'm saying, this, this, this spreadsheet was at my request at okay. the last yes, meeting. Do you want to walk, walk us through it or whatever we need yes, to do? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. At the, at the first uh, budget hearing, I brought the ordinance for the unclassified uh, service, the salary ordinance, which we bring approximately every year with the budget process. And there were quite a few classifications that were underlined meaning that they were new. They had not been a part of the previous ordinance. And Commissioner Whitehorn had questions about it. So I went back and I reviewed the ordinance and I made sure that every new classification was included in this one and um, went to look and compare as to where did, was it a new headcount, was it a new person, or was it a classification that had outgrown its purpose and the classification and the incumbent had been reclassified, or was it a title change only? And if you will see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions that I identified that are brand new that did not exist before and did not have an incumbent before. Everything else is a reclassification where the position and the incumbent was reclassified or there was a title change to more accurately reflect the person's um, positions or like in um, streets, lighting and stormwater superintendent we separated that into two classifications because storm water is too big an issue in this city to have it combined with streets and lighting. Um, so that's what that report reflected, Commissioner, and if you have any additional questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. Okay, let's, let's make this orderly. Commissioner Whitehorn, it's your item, so we'll go through. Everybody can ask questions. Why don't you begin? Because it's your, uh, your request. Well, I'm still reading it because it's so small. So maybe okay. someone I else is right, reading me... it. They have a question. All right. 
Uh, anybody on the dais? Commissioner Tobin? Um, no, it wasn't uh, my item. It, uh, what precipitated the meeting was Commissioner Whitehorn wasn't prepared to vote on budget items. And she said she might be okay with the budget, but she had questions. So we said, all right, if you want a meeting, we can have a meeting to talk about it. So this really was her okay. thing. So I'll just wait Thank until you. she's done. Thank you. Okay, I'll start to go through it even though I haven't read it all. I mean, my concern was we had a reclassification ordinance without me understanding the fiscal impact, which is why I asked for this. So there are eight positions from an assistant director of parking services compliance to um, an excellence program manager that we never had in the city before without me understanding why we need them, what they're going to do, what particular key intended outcome they were trying to fix, and in the reclassification, some of them I understand, some of them I don't, but that's okay. I mean, I don't work out there in the detail trenches every day. But it was hard for me to vote for something without understanding why I was voting for it. And that's why I asked for this paper. I mean, you know, I mean, in some cases, some of these increases are pretty material. Um, I'm not saying that they're unwarranted, but, you know, in one case, um, the emergency assistant emergency management director went from a starting base of 60,183.18 to 93,849.63. That is because uh, she was she was originally hired as a manager over uh, PSCU, uh, relatively first line management uh, position, and as time has passed since Mr. Tier has been in charge with her knowledge of the 911 system and of the operations, she's become his right hand in terms of helping him run not only the 911 center, but helping him run the entire department. Most assistant directors are at a pay grade 24. Yes, she got a significant increase because her her responsibilities expanded exponentially. And she gets along with Chuck. <laughs> and and um, also, with respect to the eight new um, positions, I believe all of them are, um, were either approved as part of last year's budget or budget amendments during the course of this year. Um, when some enhancements were asked for, for example, when we added uh, the beach maintenance director we, a few months ago with John Ripple, we had we brought those to the commission. It's just that now we have to amend the ordinance to reflect all those changes. Yes, for, uh, for except for Mr. Manager. In all fairness, when you bring us a hiring of a new director, we don't get told. And by the way, this is a new position. We're not changing. We're, we're, we, so, I mean, we are not always told the details. So budget times the one time for us to reflect and look at this and the detail that we do. Because when you bring us budget amendments and you bring us those kinds of things, we're not always told this is a brand new position, never been funded before. Those, that kind of detail doesn't get told to us, and maybe it should. But budget's my time to sit back and tear this apart. Because you know, a lot of people on this page got 25% pay increases, Sylvia. I, I, you know, Boy, it would be wonderful to work someplace where you could do that. So, I mean, you know, I mean, you want to go through and tell me and each and every one why they got a 25% increase? I can, excuse me. Not everybody got a 25% increase. I know that Maria Hernandez, for example, who is, who is your, uh, who is in charge of the convention center, um, rehabilitation or rebuilding or however you may wish to uh, call it, got a 20.2% increase. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, who is now the Assistant Director for uh, Emergency Management, um, got a 24.6% increase and um, the executive associate for the fire chief uh, outgrew her position, her role, and really assumed a role very similar to the chief of staff in the police department. And she was properly reclassified and got a 22% increase. Of all, of all the um, of all the new positions um, 
the one who got the greatest uh, increase was the green space uh, division director, which was a classification that you approved in last year's budget. And um, that simply was a function of what he was earning before to what the new position was paying. Um, the rest uh, were 2.9, 9.7, 8, 9%, 10%, 13%. Uh, yes, there were a handful who got significant increases. Um, as a human resources director and as a person who deals with the job descriptions and what the labor market is paying for these skill sets, I don't find them out of line. Hold on, Commissioner Tobin. Yeah, uh, listen, Sylvia, I trust you 100%. So when you say something like that, I, don't, I wouldn't question you about anything. I just think that there, that sometimes there, the, like, the, the, the documents may lack a little detail. And so now that we have some, some detail, I know it's better. And I know that Commissioner Whitehorn from time to time over the years would find things in the book and we'd be able to save some money here, some money there. Sometimes there was a lack of detail. So. I don't want you to think in any way that anyone is questioning. I mean, you do a yeoman's job. I know even times it's been difficult. You've had to discipline people that you work with and it upsets you, but you do what you gotta do. So this is not questioning Sylvia. No, thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, I understand honestly, that. And I, don't I think understand that. Okay. So I was just hoping that we'd have a meeting and Whitehorn would be able to find a, a million bucks here or there that we could uh, save. I think that was really the... Being able to articulate articulate what is behind these numbers is part of the job, so that's Thank why you. I'm here. Thank you, Sylvia. Commissioner Whitehorn? What I find troubling is, is that for the longest time, we existed without some of these categories and without some of these positions. And, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna substitute my judgment for yours. If the city administration says they need them at these levels and they need them at these levels, or we shouldn't trust the administration. Um, it's just disconcerting to me to see some of these levels of increases in, at the jumps that occurred all in one year, and I would have been more comfortable, you know, had we perhaps done it at a stepped approach, out of responsibility, made sure that these people were stepping up to what we expect them to do. Um, in the private sector, I don't know anyone that gets a 25% increase, and, and, you know, and that's where I'm having some trouble. And in the public sector, when times were bad, yeah, we cut a lot of salaries, we ran pretty lean, but we have to make sure that what we're building is sustainable, and that's where I'm concerned. I mean, when we have a budget that goes up 12, 13, 14 percent, we can't expect our budget, our, you know, our, our tax collections and all of our money to come in at that rate. And I get concerned when we build something that then we have to, to chop out again, you know, and go anew. And, that, and that's kind of why I'm trying to scrutinize this in, in the most, so it has nothing to do with no, you. I'm trying understood. to scrutinize because for me it's important that we leave the foundation as strong as possible. We start adding and adding. I promise you one day we'll be subtracting and subtracting. And, and so the trick to me in government is to make sure that the basis is as small and stable as possible and that we add what we can add and what we can subtract without changing the core to the city. I mean, I will perhaps ask for some more details since I just got this, but for now, I'm not sure I have more questions. Like communications, I wanted to know, the communications department budget used to be 789000 in 2013, and now it's going to a million seven forty-five. So I was wondering why we're spending an extra million dollars. Okay, Commissioner, I think what we were hoping is to get through a couple of these HR items and then okay. take on any we'll do that right after. budget right, related let's, questions. Let's no problem. Order. Let, let's move on with this. Now, Commissioner Malakoff, yeah. something let's, you'd like to let's say? Let's ask questions through the mayor, please. Okay. Otherwise, we're never going to get through this workshop. What, what do you mean? Well, Commissioner, we just want to keep you board. I, I had wanted so to speak. That's oh, all. Okay. You want I'm sorry. To talk. Um, yeah, I think Commissioner Whitehorn is correct to give the, the budget scrutiny. I know it having come from the private sector also, there are sometimes reasons for a 25% increase where somebody's responsibilities and authority is greatly changed. So I, I understand that that's also uh, uh, definitely something that is a business practice. Um, but what I think is very important, and I think that when we get to the budget, uh, John Woodruff will tell us more about it, is that the position count chart 
across all the different funds that the money comes from, that the count in fiscal year 2016 is 2065, which is 62 or 2.9 percent less than in fiscal year 07, when we had 2,127 positions. So it's not like we're adding, but we're changing in many places. We're changing the responsibilities and the the um, um, the, they're, what they're, what they, what they're in charge of. Well, they're getting doing. more responsibilities and authority as the positions change. Um, I, I just think that that's important, that it's not like we're padding it and hiring all these new people. No, we're, we actually have 2.9% less people than we did back in 2007 when Commissioners Tobin and, and Whitehorn began and their, their, their service to the city of Miami Beach. And it also shows that um, the total tax levy back in 2007 um, was not that, that much lower than it is today. There's a $4 million difference over the last eight years where the average daily population and the number of people who are here in the city of Miami Beach need more services. And the services have grown, certainly just in the two, almost two years that I've been here, so much is happening and in improving in the city of Miami Beach, and yet it's only a $4 million increase in all those eight years. So I think that um, I, I'm fine with all of these, these changes in these positions and the increases because we have to look at the bigger, I understand what Commissioner Whitehorn's doing, and she's right. You need to look at each one. But overall, looking at the entire picture, I think it's very well done, and I thank you. If, if, thank you. if I may add, sure. um, just from my own experience in my own department, what I inherited was bare bones. Um, I, I could not do the oh, yeah. job. Pardon me? What year was that? 2013. Thank you. When I came on board in 2013, it was bare bones. And I'm having difficulty finding qualified people, that is true. But if I had not uh, been able to get the enhancements that I've been able to get, I wouldn't be able to deliver on some of the requests that all of you have made when we've been in executive session and at at other meetings of the sort. I, and that is just my personal experience. I'm not speaking for anybody else. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Any other questions on this particular item? Yeah, for anyone in the commission? Was, Commissioner Whitehorn. Yeah, I, I think that picking 2007 is really unfair to the public. 2007 was a budget that neither Commissioner Tobin nor myself had anything to do with. We inherited the when we got here, which will, will, will happen to this commission that will inherit this next budget. Um, which they will inherit the 15, 16 budget. We had inherited the seven, eight budget. But even if we did have a part in it, we did not. We actually had to figure out how to bare bones the city so that our citizens had the services they needed without having a huge tax burden at the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, was we've outsourced some jobs. And if we take out the outsourcing, what's the change in the budget? Because I think that's the only fair way to look at this. You know, we had we allowed the manager to outsource a big portion of property man maintenance last year, you know, based on the fact that he wanted it to be need-based and have faster response time as opposed to have employees. So comparing numbers year to year does not always tell a story. And that's why there's no substitute for the detail to look every single year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to our next item. Mr. Manager, is something you wanted to say? or No, just on, okay. um, on the classification page, there are 31 positions that are newly classified in the, in the, in the uh, ordinance. Okay. Eight of them are brand new positions that we talked about already, so they had no previous salary. Okay. Seven were higher ranges because of added responsibilities or, um, but 16 of them are actually essentially the same range, either yeah. identical. So, um, and it was just each, you know, each director deciding that maybe they didn't need this supervisor position, they really needed that supervisor position, so okay. some flexibility, but we are, we are sensitive to that. We understand that. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Whitehart, do you want to keep going? Because you have, oh, Commissioner I'm Tobin sorry. said that you, all that you have items or areas you like to look well, at. I had asked John Woodruff to, the other thing I wanted to look at and I had asked, which wasn't provided at the budget hearing, which was 
the number of vacancies versus filled positions as we went through and we're budgeting. Mm. I wanted to make sure we weren't budgeting for positions that aren't filled, and I had asked for that, and typically we get that at budget, and I didn't get that. So again, the purpose of today is for all of you to get the information, which I typically Great. ask for. Okay. Okay. Um, you want to do that, or John, whoever wants to? I thought that the vacancy report had gone out on a letter to commission. And be more it did, but I want it on the public record for the public. Oh, I'll be more than happy to have copies made and bring them down. Um, you had also asked um, for positions, explanation on positions that had been vacant for um, a long period of time, and I have that ready for you if you'd like to see it now. And I guess the reason why I had asked for the vacancy um, in general was kind of a precursor to this. I want people to understand that, you know, there are multiple kinds of vacancies so that maybe I can impart some of my thinking on people because I won't be here next year. Thank you, John. Uh, I, thanks. Uh, you won't be here on when? I will tell you, um, through the mayor, uh, I will say uh, through, the, through the mayor, um, if, I've, if I've learned one thing, and I've learned a lot more than that over the last two and a half years, particularly in this current labor market, it's not easy to fill positions. I know it is. It takes time, background checks, wipe out a lot of good candidates, potentially good candidates. It's, uh, it's not as easy uh, to fill a position when, just because you create it. It's a difficult process. So oh, it's a strong economy now. Yeah, it's stronger. Yeah, yeah it's jobs. so hard. It's true in the banking Definitely. industry too. Just to get starting people yep. as tellers or platform officers, it takes months and months, and it's so sad because a lot of it has to do with what Commissioner Whitehorn just spoke about: the bad housing and and the mm -hmm. the, the not de what you call it, not a depression, but the 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 bad times we went through. Yeah. The economic okay. downturn, we'll call it. Um, people got terrible credit, and you, to work in a bank, you have to have decent credit. And uh, if you have a, a, a foreclosure in your in your past history, forget it. If so could, it's if, very hard hiring good people. If I could find a couple of good writers, I'd be happy to teach them the job. If they could just write oh, it's, an LTC. I know what that's about. I get it. Okay. Commissioner Whitehorn, did you want to go through this vacancy report? Or do you want Sylvia to present it? You, know? you want to present it? Yeah. Whatever. Sylvia, why don't you go ahead and present yes, it? Yes, Commissioner. These are positions that were in the vacancy report that were open um, 11 or that have been open for 11 or more months. Um, perhaps the highlight of the report as far as a positive note is concerned is that as of um, Monday, the number of positions of vacancies, police officer vacancies goes down to three, at least temporarily because a new class is starting on Monday. Uh, we have found, and I would say that if you look at this, um, the majority of the openings have been, long-term openings have been as a result of having difficulty finding qualified candidates to do the job that we need to have done. In emergency management, we've had quite a few dispatcher trainees um, positions available. We now have 35 people in backgrounds, so we've at least made conditional offers to 35 people, which is more than what we're gonna need but we don't know, We more than likely, all 35 are not gonna make it through the background process. Fleet management has had a very difficult time finding a qualified mechanic three. I need to defer to um, Mr. Cano to explain what a mechanic three <coughs> actually does because I can't begin to tell you, but he's had a difficult time finding someone and in parks and recreations, um, they have a large number of recruitments underway and they have the park ranger um, program that is new and those recruitments are underway too. 
uh, um, offers that have been made. Candidates have, are going through the background process. Uh, some positions are being re-evaluated to see if they really need to be filled or if they ought to be filled um, with some other sort of skill set. The detention officer, we've had two openings for over 31 months, and that historically has been a very difficult position to fill. We've increased the salary range for that classification to make the job more attractive to the people in the labor market. And in public works, everything is under active recruitment, and some of the positions were open for a while, primarily waiting for the new infrastructure division director to come on board, Mr. Roy, sorry, I drew a blank there for a second, to come on board and give him the opportunity to select the members of his team since he's the one who's gonna be in charge from now on. Okay, Commissioner Whitehorn. I think you did a good job, and I want to talk about a couple. I was fairly concerned with the police when the memo first came out, and that has changed, um, you know, I guess since that's come out. So that was part of, you know, I, I mean, I found it pretty unacceptable, the police department that's prayed pretty flat during my entire tenure here, to have 13 vacancies. I mean, all that does is create overtime and then stress, and we could go on and on and on about all the bad things about having vacancies. So that was, I want to talk about public works, however. To have vacancies for 150, work, 150 um, months means that this simply isn't working. And in the downtimes, we were told, Commissioner Tobin and I, Commissioner Tobin, pay attention, that you know things were bad and that everybody was working really hard and we just didn't have enough time and resources to put on trying to work and fixing this. But now we've added all these positions in City Hall. We just looked at all the positions we've added, and we just looked at all the people who, who now have expanded capacity they're being paid for. And I find it completely unacceptable that we have 38 municipal service ones and 11 twos that are still open in a division that clearly is not working. So how are we going to fix what we do? Because I got to tell you, that means that we have almost 50 people in our public works who, who are not doing what municipal service workers do, which for the most part is what? They're the ones that clean up. They're the ones that we call when we have problems with our, you know, water and our wastewater and all that good stuff. So, you know, if, if that's a real quality of life for our residents. So to sit there and have in excess of a million dollars open and not have a plan, I got to tell you, it's unacceptable at this point in time for me. Point well taken, Commissioner. We count the positions as vacant because the tasks are being performed by staffing agency employees and we never count those as city employees we want to make sure well if we can't hire them and that's our plan then let's do what we did when we did property maintenance and say we're never going to be able to staff this or maybe we shouldn't staff them because we need them at hours and times that don't work we should take them out of the budget we should have a proper pool so that jay can fund them and find them as he sees fit and we should change the budget but to hold them as positions when we have no expectation of filling them just not acceptable. If I may, Commissioner, um, the positions have bodies in them. Prior to uh, about two years ago, those positions um, had been filled by staffing agencies, had been done on a, uh, as a conscious decision to fill those on a temporary basis as opposed to filling them. In the past two years, correct me if I'm wrong, we've gone to from the temporary staffing to try and bring in permanent employees. Um, that process is done. I think we've whittled that down probably by half of what used to be there, but 90% of all the MS1s were done in, in temporary staffing, and now we've gone to a, a system where we're bringing those people and hiring them full-time. So that, that is well underway. It's not a matter that these positions haven't been filled, that they're not needed, that the work isn't being performed. It's a difference in philosophy that, yep. uh, as far as cr bringing in full-time employees. Then you're telling me I don't have 38 vacancies, I have 38 probational employees that are fulfilling an outside contract to be employees? Is that what you're telling me? I believe that is correct. Mm -hmm. I, let me, that's not, we need to then uh, hunker down on that number because I, I also, when I got this, was wondering why we had so many in that department. Um, but I, and I, I was told that we had temporary labor handling it. What I'm hearing from you, Jay, is a little different now, so maybe we need to I'll, I'll, I'll verify and we'll, we'll, we'll put together the, the list so you can see. There are some in, in operations, the majority is in sanitation. 
I know in sanitation we used to use a lot of temp workers. Yes. And I know we're transitioning. So that was part of it. But um, l l let's can't get it down on this number. We'll, I'll get a report on LTC out yeah. tomorrow on this. Great. I'll get you some clear answers on that. I think these are very good points. You know, we need to know this. Commissioner? Have we asked ourselves on any of those people who got those large increases that the reason why they're doing an increase is because we've not been able to fill these positions and therefore they're having to do double duty? Is some of the reason we've re reclassified based on our inability to hire and staff properly and not because of the work that should be done, not that the work isn't being done? Have we asked ourselves those kinds of personnel questions? I know for a fact um, this is, from a human resources perspective, a relatively small workforce. And you get to know just about everyone. And I know for a fact that the people who have been promoted are qualified, have been doing the job, had been doing it before, and were simply, simply outgrew the jobs that they had been hired to do. And Never once have I felt the need to kind of raise an eyebrow or wonder, and maybe it's me, but I really have not wondered um, about some of these increases, increases, particularly when it comes to issues of internal equity. If every assistant director is a pay grade 24, why should a brand new assistant director who has been working um, like crazy for the last two years to earn the opportunity come in earning less than what other assistant directors earn? That's another issue that I need to look at, which is internal equity. Well, so Commissioner, on your question, if you look at the positions that either are new or, or reclassified, um, I don't think any of them are impacted uh, by the, the positions here that are vague. I, I, I don't think that's the case here, um, uh, including in public works. Uh, we'll take a second look at that, but I, I believe a lot of these positions are often, as you see, line either police officers, uh, the PSCU individuals, code enforcement officers. It's, I think, usually more line folks than necessarily skilled, you know, a grants up uh, writer or something like that. But we'll double, take another look at it. But I'm pretty, I don't think there's a relation there necessarily. I do think we need to hone down better on the number of, of our vacancies. And, and quite frankly, if we can identify in public works that a bunch of these positions aren't necessary, we'll be back by the 30th with, with you know, savings, hopefully. And there are classifications where we have to go through five or six candidates before they make it through the background check. Okay, anything else on this particular item? Oh, I just would, for the, pub, for the public record, like to at least state the summary of that. And I didn't bring my um, vacancy memo it's with me. It's being copied. Thank you. I mean, we've it. seen that, but it, I wanted people to understand this particular document, you know, where we talk about the vac long-term vacancies versus vacancies, you know, in general. I just think it's hard for people to understand We'll, that, we'll put it all on. The, the bigger set, that's all. Let's make sure we put that all online so folks can access that information. Certainly. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Tobin, do you have something on this particular? No, no, thank you. Nope. Okay. All right. Commissioner Whitehorn, any other specifics? I mean, I had asked staff to prepare some stuff. John, did we do that? John? Yeah. Let's go through your stuff. Commissioner Tobin, you have ideas, right? I just had some questions okay. about three departments. Okay, great. 